we're going to look at transformations with quadratic functions. It says use a calculator to generate a table of values for this function, and that is in vertex form, which we have already talked about before. So we'll put that in calculator here, and y equals, and second graph brings up the table, and we want to start with an x value of 1, fill it out, so 12, 6, 4, 6, 12, and uh, let's see, I'm off somewhere, 1, 2, 3, 4 is 6, 5 is 12, 6 is 22, okay. Next, simplify the function by squaring, distributing, and collecting like terms. So what they mean is x minus 3 quantity squared means to multiply x minus 3 times itself. So then we FOIL that out, and you would get x squared, when you do this part, you would get um, negative 3x when you multiply uh, this times this, and then a negative 3x when you multiply this times this, and then a plus 9 when you multiply negative 3 times negative 3. So combine your like terms and you would get an x squared here, and then negative 3x minus 3x is negative 6x, and then plus 9 there, and then distribute your 2 in here, here, and here, and we'll get 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 plus 4, so combine it all, 2x squared, subtract 12x, and then 18 plus 4 is plus 22. So would this expression generate the same table of values, use your calculator to make sure, and yes it will because we just multiplied it all out, but they want us to verify, so we'll do that. 2x squared, subtract 12x, plus 22, and that is standard form, so y1 is the vertex form, uh, y2 is the standard form of the exact same function, and if we go on our table, all the table values match, and all is good. So it says these equations are both examples of quadratic functions. That's what we're working with, quadratic functions. We know that because the largest degree term is 2, meaning we have a squared term. That's the largest. More importantly, these equations show the two special forms of these types of functions, as we just stated. So standard form and vertex form. These are the two most important. So standard form, we use this form, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And for vertex form, we used f of x equals a times x minus h quantity squared plus k. Those were the two basic forms that we use. So standard form is the simplified form, meaning there's no quantity squared in it. And we use vertex form when we transform because it shows us a horizontal and a vertical movement in addition to the stretch all within as opposed to this one which doesn't directly show us the horizontal and vertical movement and it allows us to determine the equation directly from a graph because it includes the vertex which we can see from a graph. Okay so transformation effects it says when a quadratic function is given in the vertex form the parent function y equals x squared undergoes the following transformations again this is vertex form so this a value right here this a value right there the function reflects over the x axis axis if a is negative so when this term is negative it's going to open down like that it gets reflected over the x axis the graph stretches or compresses by a factor of the absolute value of a. So in other words, the sine of a does the reflecting, the value of a does the stretching or compressing. So when a is bigger than 1, it stretches vertically, so it gets thinner like this. When a is between 0 and 1, the graph compresses vertically, so it's going to get wider like this. So those are going to be the two effects. The k value, the vertex shifts vertically, so this is the up and down movement. If k is positive, it's up. 
If k is negative, it's down. H, this value inside the parentheses, is the horizontal movement left and right, and it's opposite of the sign. If it's negative, it moves right. If it's positive, it moves left. So it is opposite, it moves opposite of the sign. And the vertex, as we've discussed, is h comma k. So next we're going to look at some specific examples. All right, sample problem one here. So from the quadratic parent function, the quadratic parent function is this one right here that's labeled. It's y equals x squared. That's the most basic parabola. That's the most basic quadratic function. We compare all others to it. So part A says state if there is a reflection over the x axis. Well, we look at the sign of the a value right here, and it is positive. So no, none, no reflection. Part B, identify any vertical shift. The vertical shift comes from the k value out here. It is positive, so it's going to move up by 4. If it's positive, it's up. If it's negative, it's down. Part C, identify any horizontal shift. That comes from this number right here, left and right, opposite of the sign. So it's a negative 2, so we're going to go right to. Left and right, opposite of the sign. Part D, identify any vertical stretch or compression, and by what factor? Well, there's an implied positive one there, so none. There's no stretch compared to the parent function. Part E, determine the standard form of the quadratic equation. And then part F, sketch a graph of the quadratic parent function and give and the given function. Okay, so we need to uh, do this, x minus 2 times x minus 2, and then we'll add 4 to that. So we FOIL that out, and if you do all that work, you're going to get x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's this part, and then plus another 4. So finally, part E would be x squared minus 4x plus 8. And now for, we'll write that here, x squared subtract 4x plus 8. And part F, will graph it. So we need to move the vertex up 4 and right 2. So here's, here's the original vertex. So right 2 and up 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we'll, we're just making a sketch, so we're not getting very specific with any of the points. But it's going to be the same approximate width as the original parent function. So on this one, we'll call that good. Okay, now sample problem two. We're going to do the same thing we did before and go through this list. So part A says, state if there is a reflection over the x-axis. Yes, there is because of that negative there. So yes, reflection. All right, and then part B, identify any vertical shift. The vertical shift is controlled by this number right here and it's negative, so it would be down five. It's up and down with the sign. So if it's negative, it's down. If it's positive, it's up. Identify any horizontal shift for part C. So that's controlled by this. It's a left and right opposite of the sign. So that would be a right four for that one, right four. And then part D, identify any vertical stretch or compression. So there is none because the implied number in front here is a one. So there's no stretch or compression. If it's larger than one absolute value, then we stretch. If it's between zero and one, we compress. Part E, determine the standard form of the quadratic function. So we have this negative here, and then we'll have x minus 4 times itself. That's the squared part, and then the subtract 5. So we FOIL this part out. So that gives me x squared. That gives me minus 4x. That gives me minus 4x. I don't know why I wrote two x's there. Uh, minus 4x there and then plus 16 right there. Then I have to distribute the negative in. I can't forget about this negative here, so distribute that in. We get negative x squared plus 4x plus 4x minus 16, and then the last thing we do is that minus 5. So we put these two together, and final answer, negative x squared plus 8x, that's these two put together, plus 8x, and then negative 16 minus 5 is negative 21. So all together, negative x squared plus 8x 
minus 21. So be careful with the order. Foil it out, then distribute this in, and then last thing you do is subtract the 5 there. All right, so now we draw the graph. So I need to make the vertex originally starts here, so I need to make it down 5, down 5, and right 4, right there. And it is reflected down, so the width is not changing. There is no stretch or compression compression so I'm going to draw it do my best to draw it with the same width but it does need to open down like this all right so that's it for problem two here all right problem five here use transformations and the vertex form to determine the function rule for the quadratic function so our standard form uh, pardon me our vertex form is this form right here so this controls the stretch, the sign right here controls the reflection, this controls left and right, opposite of the sign, this controls up and down with the sign. So my normal vertex starts at 0, 0. So this is moved right, 1, 2, 3. So I usually just draw arrows, I need to move it right 3. It should start right here, so it's moved up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Moved up 5. So I need to write it so to, that it's right 3 and up 5. And then it's also reflected. So I need to make a note of that. I need to reflect it because it's opening down. Now, on a standard quadratic, the way that we tell if it's compressed or stretched in any way, we go to the second point in the x direction so 2 away, and the y coordinate from there should be 1, 2, 3, 4 away, and it is. Here's what I mean when I say that. If I put in the parent function, x squared, the normal way that this works, if I go on the table, when I'm 2 away from the vertex, when x is 2, y should be 4. So 2 in the horizontal direction should get me 4 in the vertical direction, and it does, so there's no stretch. I know that can be confusing, and we'll see another example like that uh, in, on 6, and, and hopefully it'll sink in for you. So here's what I need to do. Write 3, up 5, and reflect it. So it's f of x equals negative, because it's reflected. Write 3 would be x subtract 3 quantity squared. That's the right 3. Up 5 would be a plus 5 right here. So this is the function rule that gives me this graph. Okay, example six here. We want to write this function rule. So track the vertex first. The vertex starts here. So it's moved left one, two, three, four, five. Left five. So I need to write it so that it's left five. Then it's moved down one, two, three, four. Down four. Left five, down four. It is not reflected, so no reflection needed. Then we need to check for the stretch or compression. So we always go from the vertex, two away in the horizontal direction. So one, two, and I should be at one, two, three, four. But I'm only at one, two, so I'm half of that. It's cut in half. I took four, I divided it by two, so it's half of that. So we will have a compression. We'll compress it, compression by half. So write it, f of x equals one half because that's vertically compressed. It's The y values are half of what they were before. Left five would be x plus five, quantity squared. Down four would be subtract four. So this is our function rule that gives us this graph.